Okay, skipping back forward to chapter 5, we're going to talk about inverse derivatives. Um, this is kind of the bane of students when the AP exam rolls around. People get really tripped up on inverse derivatives. Uh, first, we're just going to talk about the relationship between f and f inverse and how to find the derivative of f inverse. And first thing I want to point out is that the Math League of America was smoking crack when they decided that this was the notation for f inverse because in your mind, the second you see that notation, you are probably thinking 1 over f of x because that looks like an exponent. But just know that that notation does not mean 1 over. It is simply the notation for f inverse. Um, and so do not think of inverses as reciprocals. Uh, it's not exactly the same thing, especially when dealing with functions like this. So, moving on to inverses. A few quick notes about inverses, and these are things that you should have heard about last year, talking about inverses. Uh, the basic definition of inverses is that f of f inverse or f inverse of f of x always cleans up to x. Uh, with my pre-cal students, I always love to put on their test some crazy ugly function like f of x equals x squared plus e to the x over um, x to the fifth all to the one-half power, something like that. So I'll give them a function like that, and then I'll say, if that's your function, what is f inverse of f of x? And those poor little fools will start beating their brains trying to solve for the inverse to figure this out. But the answer is always just x. f of f inverse is always x. And that's going to be key when we talk about the derivatives here in a second. Um, if you are given a function, you find the inverse by swapping x and y's. And I said solve for y in the new equation. That's if you have an equation for f of x. Sometimes these problems are given in tables. And uh, if it's a table, then you'll just split the x and y coordinates. And the new table becomes your inverse. And the graph of your inverse is the graph of f of x reflected across the line y equals x. We're not going to see that very much in calculus, but that is a true statement that may rear its ugly head at some point before we are done. Uh, so the derivative of f inverse, uh, which this is the same way of saying the derivative of f inverse. Now, some people, you know, like normally when we say the derivative of f, we say f prime. So people may think the derivative of f inverse is f inverse prime of x which technically that would be correct, but inverse prime just looks kind of goofy. It almost looks like f to the negative 11 power. So we will write our derivative of f inverse like this. And to get the derivative of an inverse, there is a formula. And I'm not just going to give you the formula. I'm actually going to show you how to derive the formula should you forget it. We're going to start with this basic property, the, this truth of inverses that f of f inverse is equal to x. And we're going to do the derivative of both sides of this equation. So I'm going to do the derivative of the left side, and then I'm going to do the derivative of the right side. And you can do that. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you do to the other. And I will go ahead and do the hard side. The derivative of x with respect to x is 1. So I know the right side is going to end up being 1, but the left side's a little bit hairier. That's going to be a chain rule problem. So I will start with the outside, and I'll do the derivative of the outside function, which is f prime. I will leave the inside alone. So I did the outside derivative. I left the inside alone. Now I'm going to look at the inside, and I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which the derivative of the inside is simply the derivative of f inverse of x. And that right here, this part, is what we're trying to find. So if I want to solve for the derivative of f inverse, I will simply divide by all of this other hoopla, f prime of f inverse of x. We will divide by that. Divide by f prime of f inverse of x. And that is your formula for the derivative of f inverse. So the derivative of f inverse of x is 1 over f prime of f inverse of x. And you just need to memorize this. It is in our book, but they they list it as f and g. They don't use the notation of f inverse. But anyway, so that is your formula for the derivative of f inverse, and we will use this um, whenever we tackle these kinds of problems. They don't show up much, but they show up just enough to make you angry. Um, kind of like my mother-in-law. So anyway, um, so some pre-cal questions. Um, no calculus here. I give you a table, and I want you to find f inverse of 3. So if this is a, yeah, but the table is for f of x. The table is not for f inverse. Um, but if you remember, to get the inverse, you simply flip 
the X and the Y? And this is an absolutely horrible question. Um, this should not say F inverse of 3. I'm going to change this problem um, to, well, I'll show you why I'm going to change it. Uh, F inverse of 3 means, uh, geez, should I just start over and re-record? How far have I gotten? Five minutes? I'm not starting over. I'm just going to keep going with this. We're going to change this problem. Am I being a bumbling idiot? I'm being a bumbling idiot, but it's Friday, and that's just kind of how I feel. I feel like being a bumbling idiot. Let's change this problem to find F inverse of 7. There. We can do that. So let's pretend those last 40 seconds didn't happen. We're going to find F inverse of 7. Well, remember, this is a table for F, and to get F inverse, you flip the X and the Ys. So the ordered pairs that belong to F, so F of X, includes the ordered pairs 1, 2, 3, negative 3, 5, 7, and 7, 2 thirds. Well, if I want to find the inverse, we'll just flip the x's and the y's. So f inverse is going to be the relation to 1. We'll flip x and y. Instead of 1, 2, it's 2, 1. Negative 3, 3. 7, 5. And 2 thirds, 7. So if I want to find f inverse of 7, f inverse of 7, if we look at it this way, f inverse of 7 is actually 5 f inverse of 7 is actually 5, um, because you flip the x's and the y's. And the common answer is people are going to look here and see that f of 7 is 2 thirds, and they'll think that f inverse of 7 is 3 halves, because they think reciprocals, but it doesn't work that way. Um, and the way we find f inverse of 7, we know that f of 5 is equal to 7, therefore f inverse of 7 is equal to 5. You simply flip the x's and the y's. So, F inverse of 7 means find out when y is equal to 7 in your original function. And there's your value. Uh, all right, number 2 down here, which is getting kind of cluttered up. But 2, we have this function, and I want you to find F inverse of 4. Well, now we have an equation. So what people are tempted to do here is they want to find the inverse. So they'll swap x and y, and they'll say, okay, x equals y to the fifth plus 2y cubed whoops, plus 1, which you could do. Um, but now the problem is we need to plug in 4 for x. And you, you're not going to be able to solve this for y. I intentionally chose a function that you cannot solve easily for y. Um, and so we kind of run into a roadblock here, and we get a little bit confused here. So here's, here's Triangle Man of Confusion. He's just not quite sure what's going on. Uh, and for problems like this, when you cannot find the inverse function explicitly, I am going to do something that will make any math purist cringe. So if there is a math professor out there watching this video, he's about to throw his, his uh, probably slide rule. He's probably holding a slide rule right now. And he's about to throw it through his computer screen. Um, in calculus, what we're going to do, uh, I know that f inverse of 4, that means y equals 4 in f of x, right? That means y is equal to 4 in f of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider the equation 4 equals x to the fifth plus 2x cubed plus 1. And if you cannot solve that easily, which you can't solve this easily, what we're going to do is we're just going to guess. And the three values we always guess are 1, 0, or negative 1. And I have yet to see a problem on the AP exam where it's not one of those three. So we're just going to start guessing if x equals 1. I get 4 is equal to 1 to the fifth plus 2 times 1 cubed plus 1. Uh, and that actually does end up equaling 4. So there's the value that's important, which means f inverse of 4 is equal to 1. So there's our answer. If we tried these other two, we'd get 4 is equal to 0 plus 0 plus 1, which doesn't work negative 1, 4 is equal to negative 1 to the fifth, plus 2 times negative 1, plus 1, which is negative 2. That doesn't work either. Uh, so f inverse of 4 ends up being 1. And I know that's kind of skating the rules and being very cheap, but that's what we do in AP Calculus. Um, and I hope I didn't cause any math purists to have a heart attack right there. All right, uh, a couple of calculus questions. This time, we're actually going to need to use that derivative formula for inverses. Um, and remember, the formula for the derivative of an inverse, the derivative of f inverse, is 1 over f prime of f inverse of x. 
So we're going to use that formula because here I'm asking what is the slope of the line tangent. Okay, that screaming derivative, right? Slope of the line tangent. That's a key word that says find the derivative to the inverse at 3. So what we really need to find is the derivative of f inverse at 3. So the derivative of f inverse at 3. Well, here's my formula for the derivative of f inverse. And so... I'll go ahead and write that down. Whoops, at x. And we're going to plug in 3. So at x equals 3, the slope is 1 over f prime of f inverse of... I did 3 again, didn't I? Holy cow, I forgot to change the number. I am absolutely brain farting. I'm going to have to change this because 3 is not going to work. And the reason 3 doesn't work, and this is what I ran into earlier in the video, if x equals 3 for the inverse, that means y is equal to 3 for f of x. And there is no place where y equals 3 for f of x. So this table, I'm unable to solve the problem as it's written. Which means, once again, I'm a bumbling idiot, and we'll have to fix this. So I'm going to change this. Instead of x equals 3, let's say x equals, oh, let's do 4. That'll work. At x equals 4, I guess it will help if I swap to black ink. At x equals 4, so at x equals 4, and x equals 4. And we'll plug that in. All right, so what is f inverse of 4? We're going to start on the inside and work out. f inverse of 4 is, let's see, well, that means y is equal to 4, so here's where y is equal to 4. And f inverse of 4 is going to be 2. So this is going to be 1 over f prime of 2. And f prime of 2, that's in the table. Here's 2. f prime of 2 is 2 thirds. So this is 1 over 2 thirds. Or if you're a fancy schmancy mathematician, 3 halves. There's our answer. There you go. There you go. Man, that's, I can't believe I whiffed twice on these charts. Such a loser. All right. Uh, number 2. This is the last one I wanted to do. This is uh, another calculus problem. I gave you the equation of a function. And I want you to find the line normal. Now, if you don't remember, normal means perpendicular to the tangent. So we're still going to need the derivative. And we're going to need the derivative, in this case, at negative 6. So I'm going to need the derivative of f inverse, which the formula is 1 over f prime of f inverse. You need to remember that. And I'm going to find the slope at negative 6. Now, that's going to give me the tangent slope. That's going to give me the tangent, uh, but if I need perpendicular to the tangent, I will simply um, do the negative reciprocal to get our perpendicular slope. So at negative 6, and we need to find f inverse of negative 6, right, right, right. Well, that means y is equal to negative 6 in f of x, right? If my x value in the inverse is negative 6, then y is negative 6 for my function which means I need my function x cubed plus x minus 4 to equal negative 6. And again, this is one that you are not easily going to be able to solve. You could probably pull out the rational root theorem if you want to give that a shot. I don't feel like doing that. So I'm going to go into guessing x equals 0, x equals 1, and x equals negative 1. Um, if I plug in 0, 0 plus 0 minus 4, equals negative 6. That's not right. If I plug in 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, minus 4 equals negative 6. That doesn't work. And so we'll hope that negative 1 works. Negative 1 cubed plus negative 1 minus 4 equals negative 6. That is true. So f inverse of negative 6 equals negative 1. And then I'll plug that in. So my slope is going to be 1 over f prime of negative 1. Well, now I have to find f prime of negative 1, but that's not hard. That's not hard. This is f of x, right? So if I need f prime of negative 1, I'll simply find f prime of x, 3x squared plus 1, and then I will find f prime of negative 1, which is 3 times negative 1 squared plus 1, which is 4. So there is my tangent slope, right? But I want the normal slope, which would be which would be negative four. Therefore, my normal slope is negative.
negative 4. Um, and I did say find the line normal. I didn't say find the slope. I said find the line. So we do need to go through and find the entire equation of the line. For those of you who like to stop after you find the slope. <laughs> um, so I have the slope. All I need to get the equation of a line is a point. My point, I've already determined, is six, negative 6, negative 1. That was what we found earlier. So negative 6, negative 1, which means the equation of the normal line is y plus 1 equals negative 4 x plus 6. And we are done. So there we are. There's a normal slope, or uh, the normal to the inverse. Good. All right, so how long did that take? 15 minutes? A little bit longer than I thought. Of course, a lot of that's because I kept screwing up. Sorry about that.